last time we discussed about FIR filters with only low pass specifications. We shall be taking up today a few more different types of filters that is band pass and high pass filters, what will be the sequence H n like other procedures are similar. Then we shall be taking up IIR filters, later on again we will revisit FIR filter and we will discuss about FFT. So, what we took was a low pass filter, this was the magnitude against frequency and we got H n as a sequence from this integration this is an ideal low pass filter d omega which gave me omega c by n omega c by pi for n is equal to 0 and sin of n omega c by n pi for n not equal to 0. Okay. Now, for a high pass filter, it is like this. Okay. It continues like this. This is 1. So, what would be h omega for this? Once again, you follow the same procedure it will be see this one is omega c to pi I have to take a range of 2 pi. So, h n for high pass if I write as high pass it will be 1 by 2 pi what should be the integration it will be minus pi to minus omega c and plus omega c to plus pi in between it is all 0. So, it will be minus pi to minus omega c e to the power j omega n d omega plus omega c to pi e to the power j omega n d omega. So, do you all agree? If you compute this finally, if you permit me to write the final result, I worked it, uh, there may be some slip check the result. What I have got is minus of sin of omega c into n by n pi for n not equal to 0. For n is equal to 0, for n is equal to 0, when I take sorry, for when I take n is equal to 0 in this integration, this will be 1 this will be 1 minus pi to minus omega c and omega c to plus pi, what will it be? 0, will it be 0? Okay. Thank you. So, for n is equal to 0, h 0, let us see what it is like. minus pi to minus omega c d omega plus omega c to pi d omega agreed 1 by 2 pi then this is minus omega c plus pi plus pi minus omega c. So, it is how much is it? It is not 0, it is 1 minus omega c by pi that should be h naught. Okay. Let us find out for a band pass filter, the coefficients h n for a band pass filter. We define 
the bandpass filter in terms of these two frequencies omega c 1 omega c 2 and this is pi. So, it has its counterpart on this side an image to cover minus pi to plus pi it will be like this minus omega c 2 minus omega c 1 and so on it repeats. Okay. So, what will be h n? It will be 1 by 2 pi minus omega c 2 2 minus omega c 1 alright e to the power j omega n into d omega because h omega magnitude is 1 plus omega c 1 to omega c 2 e to the power j omega n d omega correct me if I am wrong. Is this all right? First integration, earlier one, this one, upper limit should be minus omega c 1. Thank you. So, that gives me sign of check whether you are getting this. See, e to the power j omega n will give you j n in the denominator and this will be e to the power j omega n with these two values. So, again omega c 1 is appearing here. So, the, this one will be minus of e to the power j omega n j omega c okay. this should be c 1 like this omega c 2. So, again this will be a negative sign. So, okay, let me write it 1 by 2 pi 1 by j n e to the power minus j n omega c 1 minus e to the power minus j omega n c 2 plus or minus omega c 2 n into n. Okay. Will it be minus or plus e to the power j omega n integrated from minus, but this is on the lower limit. So, it should be this minus this. So, minus of okay. then plus e to the power j omega c 2 into n minus e to the power j omega c 1 into n. Correct me if I am wrong. Is that all right? Uh, this should be j n should be a common term all right. So, that gives me finally, j will get cancelled this will be leaving you a sign term this will also give you a sign term. So, you will get finally, sign of n omega c 2 minus sorry n sign of n omega c 2 minus sign of n omega c 1 divided by n pi for n not equal to 0 okay. and for n is equal to 0 for n is equal to 0 just put n is equal to 0 this becomes 1 and this becomes 1. So, minus omega c 1 minus omega c 1 so twice minus omega c 1 and plus twice omega c 2. 2 will get cancelled with this. So, you will be left with omega c 2 minus omega c 1 by pi. Okay. So, similarly for band stop filter you can see it will be like this this is omega c 1 this is omega c 2 up to pi okay it continues up to pi and h n will be by the similar procedure if you go it will be 1 minus omega c 2 minus omega c 1 by pi 
for n is equal to 0 and this will be 1 by n pi sin of n omega c 1 minus sin of n omega c 2. Okay, for n not equal to 0. There are some other special types of filters, we shall be taking up only one of them a differentiator. Now, what are differentiators? In the analog domain, when you differentiate you get a function s as a transfer function you get s any signal in the s domain getting multiplied by s will give you basically the transform of the derivative of the time function so in the s domain if you take in the continuous frequency domain therefore the transfer function will have value j omega okay in the discrete domain therefore it should be j small omega if you go along that particular argument. So, j omega if this is omega <coughs> h magnitude will be like this and its phase will be always 90 degrees j. So, h omega is equal to e to the power j omega is it e to the power j omega? No, e to the power j omega means what? Magnitude is, magnitude is always 1. Here it is just j omega. Is it all right? So, magnitude is proportional to omega. So, it is linearly varying with omega up to pi. Obviously, it cannot go infinity, uh, go to infinity, and then again it will be repeating. Similarly, on this side. Okay. it will be falling like this. So, h omega is equal to j omega between minus pi omega pi is that all right. h omega is equal to j omega between omega between minus pi to plus pi will it be a straight line like this or like this and we are interested only in the magnitude so it will be like this okay <coughs> therefore h n is equal to 1 by 2 pi it is an interesting function minus pi to plus pi j omega into e to the power j omega n d omega. Okay. So, that gives me e to the power j omega n into omega by n minus 1 by j n squared okay, evaluated at minus pi n plus pi if n is not equal to 0. Okay. If n is equal to 0, if n is equal to 0, if you integrate this, it will be 0, is it not? It will be omega squared by 2, omega squared by 2, because it is an odd function. So, it will be 0, h 0 is equal to 0 and this if you simplify this will be cosine of n pi by n one may write equal to minus 1 to the power n by n. Okay. Cosine n pi by n is it an odd function or even function? It is an odd function because this is an even function, this is an odd function. So, this will be an odd function. What will it look like? Okay. 
here it will be 0, then if I put n is equal to 1 cos of pi, so minus 1 by 1, then cos of 2 pi plus 1 by 2, so its magnitude is half, then minus 1 third, then plus 1 fourth and so on. Okay. And it will also have its counterpart on this side. Can you identify this sequence? It is an anti symmetric sequence where you are getting permanently some 90 degrees contribution of 90 degrees plus the slope. Now, this is the sequence that you get from here and then finally you shift it, is it not? This is what we did if you are given a length particular length say if it is 11 point sequence then you take 5 points on this side, 5 points on this side and 1 at the central point. So, you give a shift of 5 steps okay, and that decides the slope. Okay. So, the sequence will be minus 1 by 4, 1 third, minus half, then 1, then 0, say minus 1 by 4 plus 1 third, minus half plus 1, 0, then minus 1, half, minus 1 third and 1 fourth. and so on. If it is given a shift of 4 steps, now we are also discussing about the errors in truncation. Now, when we truncate the Fourier series, we are dropping the high frequency components. So, there will be some errors, there will be ripples and we took first a rectangular window function, all right. A rectangular window, if you take a rectangular window function, the h n values are multiplied by the window function coefficients w n and in a rectangular window this is 1. You are multiplying all the coefficients that you obtain that infinite sequence Fourier series you are chopping off at a particular point that means all the coefficients are retained as it is multiplied by 1 and rest of them are on all multiplied by zeros this is what is a rectangular window doing. Now, then we modified it by some other different types of windows where the window function was not exactly varying like this, but it was varying either like this a triangular function or maybe a function like this. There are various types of functions that we discussed depending on the individual characteristics we choose those functions. The standard ones are Hamming window, Han window or Hanning window. In many books they write Hanning window, some books write Han window. Then Bartlett and then Kaiser and so on there are many such windows. Now, let us very briefly go through the performance of these window functions. Now, in the time domain, in the time domain you are multiplying h n by the window function w n. So, in the frequency domain it will be convolved. Okay. Now, what will be the rectangular windows frequency response? Rectangular window, rectangular window will be giving you a sync function. So, it is like this any function of this kind will give you the frequency response like this and it is this distribution of the lobes okay, 
and their frequencies, how fast they appear and what is their magnitude, relative magnitudes, how fast they fall that will decide the quality of the window. Okay. Because this is to be convolved with h omega that is h n sorry. It is to be multiplied with h n and convolved with h omega. This is actual h omega, actual h n corresponds to this which is an infinite sequence and that gets multiplied by a window function like this okay, whose frequency domain representation is like this. So, this is to be convolved with this. Okay, in the frequency domain they have to be convolved. So, you take this and then gradually move it. So, the resultant will be after convolution W convolved with capital H, the result will be like this. Okay. So, this is the function that we will be getting after realizing the filter with the window function. This is the nature of variation. Now, depending on the choice of the window that you make, these ripples, the width of these ripples and their fall, their transition will be changing. Okay. So, for a filter function like this, this window function for example, if you take in the logarithmic plot that is decibel plot in db this function with different types of windows will be varying like this it will have a 0 db value and then it will be falling off like this gradually falling okay so this is 0 db say this is minus 100 db all right so for a rectangular window this fall is very slow for a rectangular window this fall is very slow that means the ripple continues for uh, for a long period all right For a hand window or panning window, what we call it, the function was cos of 2 n pi by 2 m plus 1, where m is the non zero steps in one side, okay, 2 m plus 1 is the total number of points. It was this logarithmic plot will be this is 0 dB and this is say minus 100 okay like this the first peak here is somewhere around for 50 or so okay this is about 60 uh, 40 a little more than 40 actually it is a little less than this 40 and so on. Hamming window, <coughs> Hamming window the function is 0 0.54 plus 0 0.46 cosine 2 pi n by 2 m plus 1. Okay. this fall is much better. Actually, it is the first lobe which decides about the quality. This is going to almost 60 dB okay, to the tune of 60 dB. This was a little close to 50 dB. Then Blackman window
is 0 0.42 plus 0 0.5 cosine 2 pi n by 2 m plus 1. Now, in Blackman window, he takes a something like a second harmonic 4 pi n by 2 m plus 1. See the window function extends to another cosine term okay. and that gives me even better. It is only a relative comparison, the exact values I am not plotting. What I meant is you improve further all right, by choosing a little more complicated window functions, obviously it will be uh, at some cost you have to improve. Now, impulse response we can improve the impulse response by having a transition instead of having a very sharp transition from a gain of unity to 0 in the frequency domain. H omega we had a brick wall structure for a low pass filter the ideal filter characteristics we chose like this. So, this will be realized only by an infinite sequence non-causal uh, non system it will be an infinite sequence. So, we can improve upon this by having no real filter will be having an infinite number of terms. So, if we can have a slow transition like this, the filter per performance is improved quite considerably. If we take this as omega p, this as omega s stop band frequency, this is h omega, this is 1. Then what will be d h by d omega? It will be 0 slope ok. Similarly, on this side I have not plotted the other side, it will be minus omega s minus omega p. Do you agree? So, from there and for such functions if you know d h by d omega then by integration you get the corresponding terms for this all right. So, you know the properties of Fourier transform d t f t that you have studied for the derivative function all right in the Laplace domain also you have done d f s by d s if you want um, sorry uh, sorry so you know the corresponding n times f n all right so similarly in the discrete domain also you have studied the property so we make use of that property and if you permit me i will write the answer right here, you can all derive this, it is not difficult or you can start even from the fundamentals minus omega s to minus omega p there is a straight line. So, you have to write the equation of the line, then again a constant and then again equation of this line and then you integrate over the entire span, you will get the same result. Twice sin of n delta omega by 2 by delta omega into n into sin of n into omega c divided by n into pi for n greater than 0, where you have delta omega is basically omega s minus omega p and omega c is basically the arithmetic average omega s plus omega p by 2. Okay. So, omega c is this average point and delta omega is this band. Okay. So, in terms of those you will get this.
So, this is about a low pass filter with a transition given transition rate. You can have these are called spline functions from here to here the roll off can be in different forms. This is a 0th order spline if you can have higher order spline or rather first order spline this is a first order spline 0th order will be a vertical line. Uh, if you have higher order spline say p th order spline functions are like this say. I can go from omega p to omega s in this manner okay. or you can have higher order spline basically higher order means you are trying to fit in more and more polynomial I mean polynomials of higher and higher order okay. and then make it go like this. So, most commonly chosen higher order spline will be like this cubic spline that is known as a cubic spline okay. instead of having a like this or this you have a smooth transition like this. Okay. So, if you have a pth order spline then the low pass filter will be omega c by pi for n is equal to 0 and sin of it is very simple delta omega by 2 p by delta omega into n by 2 p whole thing to the power p and the other term is same sin n omega c by n pi all right this is for n not equal to 0. Now, we shall start a general analog filter design, we will come back to FIR filter later on. Before we go for the design, let us see the specifications for an analog filter. An analog filter will be specified since no filter will be ideal. So, we specify in terms of some tolerance. Okay. Like this. Some tolerance here and this is in the analog domain omega p and omega s this is a stop band frequency that means within a certain tolerance this gain falls beyond this frequency omega s and up to omega p it remains close to a gain of 1 within a certain tolerance. So, omega p and omega s this will be pass band and stop band frequencies and stop band frequencies and we will also define delta p and delta s as the ripples. So, 1 minus delta p h okay, j omega 1 plus delta p. So, about the mean value of 1 this is 1 plus delta p and 1 minus delta p. Sometimes that 1 plus delta p is taken as the reference 1 that is normalized. So, H a is less than delta s in the stop band. and here omega is less than equal to omega p. Between omega s and omega p it is not defined 
and there you have some freedom to choose the path of transition. Okay. Now, we define alpha p as the peak passband ripple. in d b. So, that will be minus 20 log of 1 minus delta p. If we define this as I was telling you, if I take this as 1 normalize it and this as delta p, then basically how much is the maximum tolerance? Okay. So, delta p 20 log of that okay, one minus delta p if you take 20 log of that. So, this will be alpha p it is a negative sign it is less than 1. So, it will be coming as a negative term. So, negative into negative will make it positive. So, alpha p if I say 2 dB or 5 dB so, you know what is the value of delta p. Similarly, alpha s is the minimum stop band, minimum stop band attenuation which is minus 20 log of delta s, so many dB. So, it will be a plus say it may be plus 40 dB. That means, your minimum attenuation should be 40 dB. Attenuation is just opposite of gain. How it is sometimes we call it loss function. So, loss should be at least so much. That means, loss should be more, more than 40 dB. All right. That means, gain should be very, very small. It should tend to 0 in the stop band. Twenty log of H is equal to twenty log of one minus delta P in the pass band. Okay, I will call it H minimum, and that's equal to minus alpha P we are calling. So H delta P, what will it be equal to? alpha p by 20 with a negative sign and if I subtract from here. So, that will be 1 minus 10 to the power check whether this is all right minus alpha p by 20 that gives me log of 1 minus d p. So, delta p will be this much. Similarly, delta s I can write in terms of alphas 10 to the power minus alpha s by 20 is that all right. So, from there we define k as the transition ratio. Transition ratio that means, if it is falling off from delta p to delta uh, sorry uh, omega p to omega s all right. So, omega s is how many times omega p all right. So, equal to omega p by omega s it is either way it is obviously less than 1 for a low pass filter and greater than 1 for a high pass is it greater than 1 for a high pass filter. greater than 1. Okay. Where is it going to for a high pass filter? Mm. All right. This is pi say. So, this is omega s, this is omega p. All right. Okay. 
maximum passband gain is 1 and minimum passband gain is 1 by root 1 plus epsilon square. Okay. What is epsilon? So, if you remember in your earlier filter theory, you have used it anyway, this is 1, this is 1 plus epsilon square under root. Okay. So, epsilon is a parameter which decides this width, how much a fall will be there. Suppose, epsilon is 0 0.3 epsilon is 0 0.3, then epsilon square is 0 0.09. So, 1 by 1 plus epsilon squared will be 1.09 under root, okay. approximately 1 by 1.045, approximately say 0 0.96. So, the gain is between 1 and 0 0.96. In the pass band, it varies between 1 and 0 0.96, it means that. So, epsilon is just a parameter which decides the tolerance in the pass band. We define and also maximum stop band ripple is defined as 1 by A. In the stop band, this we are defining as 1 by A, alright. That means, A defines just inverse of this value. Okay. So, discrimination parameter or constant we define k 1 as epsilon by root over of a squared minus 1. So, what is this ratio? Epsilon means what? If epsilon is large, if epsilon is large, epsilon is large means this is large. So, the, there is a large variation this in the pass band the variation is more is it not if epsilon is large and if a is large this is small so if you want to have a discrimination have a low value of epsilon and high value of a all right it all depends on how you choose discrimination means here and here in both the zones, how relatively you are trying to reduce these. So, so large A means in the stop band you are restricting this width, this tolerance. Now, let us come to a very standard simple design, a Butterworth design. A Butterworth function, a Butterworth function, it looks <coughs> sorry, it looks like one plus omega by omega c to the power two n. Okay, so twenty log of h. I'm not writing g omega every time. If I take 20 log of this, it will be 10 log of 1 plus omega by omega c to the power 2 n that is all minus. Okay. When omega is equal to omega c, this is equal to 1. So, 1 to the power 2 n is 1. 
So, th this will be 20 log of 2. So, that will be so at omega is equal to omega c, this will be equal to minus approximately 3 dB. So, minus 3 dB point is omega equal to omega c. At omega much much greater than omega c h a okay, squared will tend to 1 by omega by omega c to the power 2 n. Do you all agree? This quantity is more than 1. So, to the power 2 n if I take a frequency much larger than omega c this will be uh, quite all, I mean uh, 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 quantity much greater than 1. So, this will be dominating. So, we will have this much approximation and in the logarithmic plot it will have 20 n dB per decade fall. Okay. So, the Butterworth filter if this is a 0 dB line earlier in the past band this is a function you see as we go from omega equal to 0 onward this magnitude is becoming more and more it is positive and hence the fraction here <coughs> sorry this magnitude overall magnitude is gradually falling it will be monotonically falling there will not be any rise in between and when omega is very large it will be falling with this slope. So, at the most it will be 1 when omega is 0. So, 20 log of 1 is 0. So, it will start from 0 dB line, it will stay close to this and then after omega equal to omega c, it will have an asymptotic fall of 20 dB per decade. That means, it will be 3 dB here and then gradually catch up with this asymptote, which is 20 n dB per decade. So, the rate of fall will be depending on the choice of n. The higher the value of n you choose, the sharper will be the fall. Okay. At omega equal to omega s, this will be 1 by 1 plus omega s by omega c to the power 2 n and that should be equal to 1 by a squared. A is the gain and this is h square, I am considering h square. So, that will be 1 by a squared okay. and at omega equal to 0 or omega equal to omega p h square will be okay, let me uh, take the next page at omega equal to omega p h j omega p squared will be 1 by 1 plus omega p by omega c to the power 2 n okay, and that is equal to 1 plus epsilon squared. Okay. Now, from these two specifications of epsilon and a, we can choose the value of n depending on which quantities are specified. Epsilon squared is equal to omega p by omega c to the power 2 n. Okay. Could you tell me what would be the expression for the other quantity omega s by omega c to the power 2 n is equal to s squared minus 1. Are you getting this? See s square is equal to this much both are 1 by this quantities. So, if I subtract 1 from here, so omega s by omega c to the power 2 n try to eliminate and get hold of n. Our first task will be to determine the order of the filter that is n. 
from the given specifications. You are given either A and epsilon omega s and omega p. So, log 10 a square minus 1 by epsilon squared divided by log of 10 omega s by omega p. Now, actually omega s and omega p need not be given explicitly, it can be given in terms of the ratio all right. That is what I said either you may be given all of them or it may be in terms of those two parameters that we defined that is log of sorry this is log of 1 by k 1 by log of 1 by k. You may be given even these. Okay. So, this will be the design of Butterworth filter. Now, before we take up other types of filters, now we will be uh, stopping here today. I will just give you uh, in brief the idea for designing an IIR filter. In IIR filter what we do? We start off from analog filter with the same specifications we design an analog filter first. Then you make a substitution for S all right. What is it in terms of S? That means we are going from the continuous domain to the discrete domain. In the continuous domain the transform is S. What is its equivalent in the discrete domain? Z. So, you establish a relation between S and Z. Okay. Now, there are different types of relationship. One is the actual relationship is e to the power minus s t is equal to z to the power minus 1. This you can prove any discrete sequence you find out what will be its Laplace transform and what you have replaced is e to the power minus s t by z inverse. So, this is the ideal relation. Now, e to the power minus s t is an infinite sequence. All right. I can write z is equal to e to the power s t. All right. So, what is s? ln z 1 upon t is s. So, in the analog domain wherever s appears if I replace it by z of this kind then I will get the z domain function it is very complicated l n z what is it you do not get in terms of z inverse any polynomial for l n z all right. So, this is the problem representing s in the z domain by various approximations there are number of approximations for example, I will give you just one s corresponds to a derivative operation all right. So, if I have an f t here output is f dash t. So, basically I have put an s in the s domain is it not f s multiplied by s will give me s times f s whose time domain representation is f dash t. So, this block if I now try to have f dash t in a very approximate form it is f t n minus f t n minus t that is n minus 1 ok n minus 1 divided by t and if I normalize that that, that is divided by 1 ok. So, if I take the corresponding z transform it is f z minus z inverse f z. So, it is it can be or if you put divided by t. So, 1 minus z inverse by t is some approximation of s all right. While doing this approximation suppose this is the slope you are taking this value minus this value divided by this as the slope. Somebody may take this slope at this point as the future value minus this divided by this. So, that is another approximation basically for a curve the slope at a point you are approximating by 
just a straight line. So, a slope here either you measure from this side or from this side, but neither of them will be true. Okay. So, we will see by having further modifications on this instead of a single straight line, I can go for second order, third order, fourth order and so on higher order approximations of a derivative function and then what will be the corresponding z domain function. So, s will be converted to z by different transformations. The most commonly used transformation is bilinear transformation 1 minus z inverse by t is one uh, type of approximation. Similarly, the other one if you take the forward point if you take higher order term <coughs> the general the general transformation is Adams Moulton transformation. Bilinear transformation is the simplest that is the lowest order of Adams Moulton transformation. So, we will take it up in the next class. Thank you very much.